So we're continuing on here uh, with describing how can we get more strain. And uh, oops. and the other way I would like to introduce is changing our idea of dimension. You know, first we already changed the idea of dimension by adding multiple layers by effectively increasing the electric field. So there are also other tricks that we can do. So the next trick I want to introduce, trick number two, is to change the mode. And, I'll, and I will introduce, obviously, uh, what that means. See, normally, up, up till now, uh, I'm introducing the fact that we have a piezoelectric material that looks like this, and uh, you know we're applying some voltage over it and we're getting some displacement. But due to the Poisson's ratio, you know, when we apply this voltage, in this case, the material is going to shrink, right? If I draw an exaggerated view of the material shrinking, this is super exaggerated, the material will shrink like that because the electric field is going opposite, so the material is going to shrink. So basically, because of the Poisson's ratio, the material will also expand in the width, width-wise. And this ratio from expanding and contracting uh, from the relative or the direction of applied force is called the Poisson's ratio. It's around 0.3 for most materials and piezoelectric materials as well. So let me ask you a question now. How can we get more strain using this idea? Well, how can we not strain? How can we get more uh, displacement is a keyword. Displacement, not necessarily strain. We want displacement. That's the real thing we need. So let me just draw this material. I want you to be a little bit smaller. And let's call this thickness one millimeters, and the length is twenty millimeters. And we'll call this have a polarization like this. So now, what happens when you apply an electric field? Let's say we apply a positive. Well, let's just do a negative, and we apply a positive here on the bottom side. And the material is going to expand. It's going to look sore like this. This is super exaggerated. Don't ever think that this is going to be nanometer range. <laughs> or micrometer at the best. So the material is going to start to look like that. Uh, we could perhaps you can draw a box, which would be better. Uh, sort of like this, you know. The material is going to be sort of like that, getting bigger. So let's just calculate now. Uh, we have two types of D constants. I mentioned if you apply, uh, and, and let's, let's work with this coordinate system. I'm not sure if I introduced it earlier, but the direction of the polarization is called the three direction. We don't call it X, Y, Z. We use three, one, two. Okay. Uh, and the direction, other than the polarizing direction, is called one. Or you can also call this direction two, but we're doing it with the 2D type of model, so we're only going to use three and one. So up till now, this case is the three, three, three case, where we apply the electric field in the three direction, and we get the resulting stress or strain our displacement and the three direction so the same direction we get and and this I mentioned is about 500 we'll call it 300 e to the minus 12 and in the other case is the d31 where we apply the electric field in the three direction but we're interested in this in this displacement right here so in that case we're gonna have a negative number because whenever this direction expands the other direction will contract so this is a, let's say around negative 100 e to the minus 12 and then what was the what were the units? Meters per volt. Great. So let's calculate two cases. You know, we'll go with case A and we'll go with case B. Okay, case A. We apply the electric field and we want to know the displacement one. In the in the three sorry, in the three direction. So how do we do that? So first we have the change in length equals you know, we already did this derivation, equals the voltage times the D constant. This is a three, three, three. So what what happens here now? So we have uh, 300 e to the minus 12. And we'll, we'll say we're applying a volt of one volt uh, just for fun. We're not actually doing one volt. We're doing one volt over that one millimeter thickness. So therefore, We'll have uh, meters per volt and one over 
millimeters per millimeters for one volt therefore we're going to get a displacement of about 300 e to the minus 12 times 1 e to the 3 basically that's 300 nanometers that's change in length okay sorry I sort of uh, skipped one section but this equation right here it's for the um, it's only for the developed for the 3 3 case if we if we calculated the strain uh, 3 you know the strain in the 3 direction uh, we would get actually uh, the electric field times the d3 3 so going back to that original equation and let's start with that equation for the 1 1 mode for the d th for the 3 1 you applied the electric field in three direction in the one uh, we can just call it the strain in the one direction for now so we don't use that original description d three one because remember here the when, when we when we converted you know when we converted these two the voltage over the length these lengths canceled out but here as we're going to see changing the length of one direction for the length in the one direction and this is the voltage over the three direction so this is the this is the three direction here length three I'll call this L3 and we'll call this 20 millimeters L1 so these lengths are different so they don't cancel anymore so we're gonna have to sort of evaluate this so this is D31 let's just make, simplify the equation here now L1 equals L1 over L3 times the voltage times D31 so the sort of geometrical factor change in the length is equal to L1 over L3 in our case it's 20 this increase is 20 L1 over L3 this is how we design this material and uh, although this is one-third the size but this geometrical factor you know this is one-third the size of D33 or over here but because of this geometrical factor we're getting 20 times so 20 divided by 3 this is a this is a very difficult problem. Twenty divided by three. Let's work on it together. So twenty three. How do you do that? Hours later. Okay, we're back after one hour, and I figured out it's six point six six, which is six over two over three. So basically, uh, we get this kind of increase, almost let's say about seven times. Although the d three three d three one times 3 equals d33 three three. Uh, because we extended this length uh, we could we could maintain that higher electric field uh, which actually allowed us to uh, get a larger um, displacement so we can do multi-layer I described all already in the last lecture last video and now we can kind of use this different mode and I'll kind of describe more about the anisotropy uh, of piezoelectric materials and different modes, but just realize, look, hey, just use, use, the, use it the other way. L look at the displacement over here, and you get seven times more displacement than you would normally, and you get with that electric field. So it's kind of nice. It's kind of this sort of uh, factor here. So let's continue. So what's the third way? Maybe more ways, but let's con third way is to use the resonance effect, and we talked about this in the last lecture, frequency response extensively. use this resonance effect and then when we mention that the change in the length in resonance you know you drive it at that frequency uh, is going to be equal to 8 over pi squared which is a little bit less than 1 but it's equal to that times the quality factor basically the losses inverse of the loss multiplied by the electric field and the D let's D31 or D33 times the length length one or length three whichever one you're sort of interested in so this is what kind of this factor oh, that was a little bit accident uh, this factor right here really helps you to increase the uh, displacement other uh, before we saw it seven times this factor right here can be normally 65 to 2000 
we're talking about seven times before. Well, you could probably chop up the material, make it smaller, multi-layer, you know, several, several, maybe 100 layers or something like that. It can also be 100, but this is 2,000 times larger. Sorry, this effect is 2,000 times larger. So it's quite, uh, you know, an amazing uh, feat. And remember, what it was is this S, the quality factor, is S double prime over S prime the the ratio between the compliances uh, of the material, or we can see the tangent, or we can describe it in Young's modulus, which is a little bit more uh, friendly. The tangent delta is this, which is the and you go to the last lecture if you want to learn. <laughs> if you don't remember what this is, or go to the last lecture. Uh, but basically, how much loss does a spring have? If if you can recover all the energy of the piezoelectric material in a spring by pulling on it and pushing on it, uh, then you have a loss. You have a low loss material, and it's gonna really show this resonance amplification effect. So two thousand times more. This is the way we get more uh, vibration or more or larger displacement on these these materials. And finally. Uh, I want to end this uh, session by describing, you know, okay, so fine, I'll just apply 1,000 volts. You know, it's not so hard to apply 1,000 volts or 1,000 kilovolts. So if you, if, you, if you apply, you know, let's say 1,000 e to the 3 kilovolts, and we have this D, uh, which is 1. Let's say it's, remember, it's 300 e to the minus 12, and we have our you know, change in L, let's say this is a 3-3 mode, D3-3 is inactive, so we have this simple equation we can use. Then what do we have here? This is actually 1, e to the 6, 300, e to the minus 12, then we can use, we can end up with 300 micrometers. This is 300 micrometers. But actually, depending on the material you're using, this is not possible. It's not possible for you to get 300 micrometers. Because the maximum strain before the material fractures is 0.1%. So, if you have a 10 millimeter material, the maximum strain you can get before the material breaks is 10 micrometers. 10 micrometers, because you divided, this is like 10 to the minus three. So it is 10 micrometers you can get. So basically the most strain you can get is, uh, the most strain you can get is one millimeter per meter. One millimeter per meter. This is the maximum strain you can get before the material fractures. So you can't just keep applying voltage, voltage, voltage. Uh, this, you know, case, you know, how large must the material be for this to be occurring, you have to have a 300 millimeter material. Despite no matter what you use, if you use a multi-layer, if you change your mode, if you whatever you do, you will not get more than 300 mil, mil, milli strain. Sorry, one milli strain, uh, and you have to kind of judge your application toward that. And there's different ways to still make use of piezoelectric materials because sometimes you need micro nanometer resolution. You need to move a. Uh, you know, these different types of precise microscopes and things like that. You, you move them in the millimeter range. The, sorry, the nanometer range or the micrometer range. So you have such materials where you can actually achieve that. Uh, but if you're thinking about making a piezoelectric car, you're crazy. Look at these numbers. Look at this nanometer. How many times is saying micrometer or nanometer? You're not going to make a piezoelectric car. You're not, so you've got to be real, a bit realistic. These aren't magical materials. You can't just apply, keep applying voltage, keep applying force, come up with some creative way to use them. Uh, there are fundamental limitations on the material. Thanks for watching. I'll continue with some more number crunching next time.